Assalamu alaikum dear learners, this is Mohamad Shodil Islam, Senior English Teacher, Manchester School and College. I hope you all are fine, I am also fine, Alhamdulillah. Dear learners, today I have again appeared before you for having another English class for the students of class 8. And our today's online video class number 24. Dear students, I hope you all are doing your CWs, SWs and are submitting it uh, to your respective uh, teachers. I hope you uh, all are attending Zoom live classes also. Dear learners, you should be very very careful in watching the online video classes because every class is very important and you should follow all the advices given in the video classes and Zoom classes. Today I have again designed my class with the help of PowerPoint presentation. But before starting today's new topic, I would like to ask you some question from the previous lesson. Let's start to the class now. Evolution of previous class. Dear learners, you learned passage narration in the last class. So, here is an exercise for you. Just try to do yourself. The teacher said to Asir, the teacher said to Asir, why are you talking in the classroom? I'm sorry sir, said Asir. Have you done your homework? The teacher asked. No sir, I was outside Dhaka yesterday. Be attentive and listen to my lecture. I think you all can do it. Still, I would like to give the solution here. But before that, I would like to give you some information. Before doing any passage narration, you must read through the whole passage from the beginning to the end. And then you should find out the sentence pattern, what type of sentence, is it integrative sentence or assertive sentence and uh, what will be the reporting verb, uh, what will be the connector and why, uh, how you should design the sentence and you should keep in mind whenever you are doing an exercise or passage narration all the all types of sentence it may be integrative sentence, assertive sentence, imperative, optative, it doesn't matter all sentence will be assertive sentence. That's why it is called narrative step also. So the first sentence here, why are you talking in the classroom? This is an integrative sentence. I'm sorry sir, sit a seat. This is assertive sentence and uh, it's a, a reply to the first sentence. Have you done your homework? Another integrative sentence. The teacher said no sir. And this is on another reply from the previous question. I was at say Dhaka yesterday and this it is additional information so you should add it with no sir be attentive and listen to my lecture be attentive is imperative sentence and listen to my lecture so you all should uh, have a clear idea about how you should solve this exercise here is the answer for you the teacher asked us it as it is Integrative sentence. So we uh, we used here, we have used here asked, and um, if any integrative sentence contain doublet question, then we need not any additional connector. We can use that doublet question as connector. So we uh, we have used here why he is. Are you talking? This is present continuous tense. So we must use it present past continuous tense. He was talking in the classroom. I am sorry sir, said Asir. Here Asir replied the previous question. So Asir respectfully replied. Here you can see that the word sir. If you have any sir, your teacher or boss, then you can use respectfully. Replied that he was sorry. The teacher again asked Asir if he had done his homework. Here you can notice that these integrative sentences contain WS question, but this one has no. W question so we use here if 
as connector. Asi respectfully replied in the negative. When you see um, uh, uh, sir, then you should respectfully, but when you uh, have uh, no or yes, then if you have yes, then you, you can say, you can write, and you must write that replied in the affirmative. And when you uh, uh, when there is no, then replied in the negative. And say that he had been outside Dhaka the previous day. Here the adverbial yesterday turned into the previous day. The teacher ordered him. Here you, you should be um, careful that the teacher uh, can order in the classroom. So the teacher ordered him to be attentive. And here the connector is two because we know imperative sentence um, that, ha that has no let. Uh, we must use two as connector. Be attentive and listen to his listener. Here you can notice that uh, I use uh, a in the bracket after he. That means uh, the pronoun of teacher is uh, he and uh, the pronoun of Asir is also he. So you must uh, clear that uh, whom uh, you are going to indicate. He, here he is Asir. So we write a, uh, the first letter of Asir in the bracket and here he is uh, we mean the teacher, so we uh, use T in the bracket after his. That means his lecture, the teacher's lecture. Okay. I think you all learned this lesson. Dear learners, now it's time to uh, today's topic. And you say transformers of sentence. Today's topic is transformation of sentence. You have uh, learned all the rules of transformation of sentence in your previous classes. I think I have a sufficient class uh, step by step from affirmative to negative, assertive to interrogative, etc. etc. Now it's the time to do exercise and you should think uh, over the uh, matter as a whole, a contextual exercise, okay? But I would like to give you some more information about it. So uh, before starting uh, today's new class, we must have a clear idea what is the objective of our class that means after the end of the class the learners will be more proficient to change the sentences according to the direction and more confident on transformation of sentence more proficient that you may have idea you may you have knowledge about the transformation of sentence in an basal sentence but here you will be more proficient to change sentences okay then you must and you will have the confidence to transform sentence and what will be the outcome of our class that is particular you must gain it and after the end of the class the learners will be able to change the sentences according to the direction that means you have the ability and i hope you must have the ability to change the sentences according to the direction after having this class okay okay dear learners then we may have a primary discussion what is transmission of sentence you know i think you know transmission of sentence means to change a type of sentence to another type without changing of its meaning that means you can change the type of sentence but you cannot change the meaning of a Sentence that is called transformation. If your meaning is changed with the change of the type of sentence, then it is called conversion of sentence. This is not transformation of sentence. The, it is very important. You should you should try to understand the meaning of every sentence. Without understanding the meaning of every sentence, you cannot change it properly. Example: Dipu is a good boy. Here, Deep is a good boy, but we can say it, isn't Deep a good boy? What is the difference? The first one is assertive and second one is interrogative, but the meaning is the same. Deep is a good boy, isn't Deep a good boy? That means Deep is a good boy. I think you are clear about what is translation of sentence. Dear learners, how many changes we have to learn for the this examination? Following types of change are set in the JS examination, particularly, nothing more. 
the first one affirmative to negative negative to affirmative assertive to interrogative interrogative to assertive assertive to exclamatory exclamatory to assertive assertive to imperative imperative to assertive active voice to passive voice and passive voice to active voice that means you may have uh, 10 type of changes but here affirmative to negative vice versa if i if you think like that that there are five type of changes okay you will have five sentences in the exercise uh, um, in uh, the examination and uh, five sentences will be different type different type of changes okay and if you have the proficiency to changing in changing all type of this type of sentence then you may uh, have uh, a, a hope that you are going to have the good preparation for this type of exercise before doing an exercise you may uh, you may follow some uh, process here read the whole given passage attentively then you must read the text attentively whole text because it will be set in the in contextual meaning okay second one determine about the type of sentence what type of sentence is it is it assertive or integrative or active or passive or affirmative or negative find the keywords of every sentence that means you must find the keywords in a sentence that will be that can be changed that will help you to um, change the sentence that is keyword fix what sentences need to be done for a sentence you must fix it what uh, what are asked to change what is asked to change in uh, in the exercise sometimes we see a student um, the direction is to change the sentence into assertive sentence and he may change it into integrative sentence. He he he's asked to change it into affirmative sentence. He may just uh, um, just do it in integrative sentence. It should not be ex accepted expected. So you must fix what changes need to be done for each sentence. Be sure of the tense of each sentence. And you know, verb without using verb you cannot make a, a, a complete sentence so every complete sentence must contain a verb and verb is very important if your verb is wrong your sentence will be wrong so be sure of the tense of each sentence be sure of the right punctuation mark for each sentence this is very very, very important we uh, we may find in the um, uh, exam paper answer is keep that uh, the student uh, a uh, student did everything okay but uh, uh, he uh, he may not put interrogative interrogation note of interrogation at the end in the interrogative sentence or uh, put an uh, a note of exclamation at the um, end of an exclamatory sentence that is very unfortunate and uh, sometimes uh, we find that um, students uh, is asked to change it from interrogative to assertive he may uh, do everything okay, but he put a, a question mark at the end, but he need to put a full stop. That is very important. Okay. Before doing an exercise, you must follow these all instructions. Remember, change the type of sentence, but not the meaning. Very important. Type of sentence can be changed, but not the meaning. Dear learners, now take your Nabudud book, take your copy and put down some important notes. Open your book, transformation of sentence and exercise from your Nabudud book. Okay? I think you are ready. Dear learners, question. What will be the question for this exercise? Change the following sentences as direct in the brackets. There will be five sentences and each sentence contains one mark. That means five marks for five sentences. The first exercise, exercise number one from your Nobudud book. I think you you uh, you will be understand. Uh, uh, you will be understood that I am going to do some exercise from Nobudud book. 
and here is the first exercise don't look down upon the poor you need to change it from into passive then suddenly i notice a very nice deer interrogative sentence it only remain remained sleeping negative sentence what a sound sleep it slept assertive sentence a deer is found nowhere but in the zoo this is the first step then you must um, know what type of sentence don't look down upon the poaches you need to change it into passive that means it is an active sentence suddenly i notice a very nice deer you need to change it into interrogative sentence that means it, uh, it is an assertive sentence it only remained sleeping negative that is it is affirmative sentence what a sound sleep it slept exclamatory sentence you need to turn it into assertive sentence a deer is found nowhere but in the zoo nowhere that is a, a negative sentence you need to change it into affirmative sentence the first second step the is done now you you must have the idea how you should change voice change from active to passive or passive to active how you um, how you should change the sentence from affirmative to negative and what is the keyword here don't look down upon the poor don't is the keyword here you can start let not okay let not and then you write the object the poor then b3 looked down upon that is done on the other hand suddenly i notice a very nice deer if you want to change any assertive sentence into interrogative sentence then you must first find out if there is any auxiliary verb because we cannot make any interrogative sentence without uh, taking help uh, of auxiliary verb and there is no auxiliary verb in this sentence so we should um, have an auxiliary verb there is an and this is a, a, a a rule that there is no auxiliary verb you must take help from do does or did here the sentence is past tense notice though so you um, take do and i think you can remember that every assertive sentence when whenever you want to change uh, an assertive sentence into a uh, interrogative sentence if the sentence is negative you must turn it into affirmative and if the sentence is affirmative you must uh, uh, turn it into negative here the sentence is affirmative so we use didn't didn't i notice the frequently uh, frequently done the mistake noticed when you use didn't then you should not use notice because didn't represent past indefinite tense okay like that you must uh, think about think over every sentence how you should change it and you should have a plan here is the answer for you the first one don't look down upon the poor passive let not wherever you find and don't we must start with let not then the object the poor then from um, auxiliary verb b here and b3 looked down upon that is done and the second one b suddenly i noticed here didn't i notice a very nice tear suddenly you must put the um, uh, adverb at the end of the sentence here the adverb is at the beginning of the sentence suddenly and we put it at the end of the sentence and the third one it only remains sleeping here the keyword is only what should i use instead of only nothing but yes it did nothing but nothing but did nothing but because we must use only we must use nothing but instead of only because here is a thing we know some uses about only when uh, only represents only modifies a, a person or the creator then we, we use none but when it yeah, it depends a thing or work then we use nothing but when it's a uh, uh, it um, um, uh, when it modifies a number or is uh, not more than not knows than like that we use here only remain sleeping sleeping is the word so we use it it did nothing but remain remain sleeping the d what a sound sleep it is 
when you want to turn uh, an exclamatory sentence into assertive sentence then you must follow it or how the sentence uh, starts is it um, uh, does it start with what or how if it uh, starts with what then you must follow the uh, next word is sound sleep okay here the subject it slept so you must write the first the subject then the verb it slept it slept okay then you write all the rest part after what a sound sleep a very sound sleep why should you use a very here very the adverb we and we use ad, uh, very as adverb instead of what it slept a very sound sleep okay the last one a deer uh, a deer is found nowhere but in the zoo nowhere but it's only present only when we in the affirmative sentence we use only and uh, in the negative sentence we uh, we use nowhere but when only modifies a place here the, this is a place in the zoo so we use here a deer is found only in the zoo Dear learners, I think you all uh, are understood about all the rules of these five sentences and uh, I think you are clear about how you should change the um, sentences and do the exercise. Okay. And the next one, exercise number four from your Nobudud book, exercise number four. Dear learners, here is the text for you. Rana is a regular student. Negative. He is very hard working boy. Interrogative. He is he never comes to school late. Affirmative. He makes good results on all exams. Interrogative. For these teachers love him very much. Boys. That means here that the only mention is boys. That means you change the boys. Is the interesting thing there is nothing mentioned active or passive you must uh, be aware of it what type of sentence is it is it active then you should turn it into passive if it passive then you should turn it into active here rana is a regular student negative we find just there is a, a auxiliary an auxiliary verb whenever you find an auxiliary verb in a sentence then you must put not after the auxiliary verb and change the next adjective in the opposite word here is the answer for you rana is not an irregular student here rana is a regular student he is not he sent is into negative then a regular but here an irregular this mistake uh, is done frequently in the examination by the students they write are irregular students here they write a irregular student but here, here is the use you must remember about articles irregular we know when a word pronounced sound is vowel sound at the beginning then we must use n okay and it's very important number b he is a very hard working boy interrogative and here is also a, a, an auxiliary verb so it's very easy you just put the auxiliary verb at the beginning and make it negative that means isn't if you write isn't he then it will be a the correct sentence isn't he a very hardworking boy? And here is the main thing. You must put a question mark at the end of the sentence because this is interrogative sentence. He never comes to school late. Affirmative. Never. You just this is your keyword never. Never is uh, affirmative word is always. So you write, you must write, he always comes to school and you change it late. He always comes to school timely. Okay. Number D, he makes good result, results on all exams. Interrogative. But here you notice this sentence is also interrogative. There is an auxiliary verb that there is no auxiliary verb. If there is no auxiliary verb, we must use don't, doesn't, or didn't. Here this is sentence is present indefinite sentence. So we must use doesn't doesn't he and you must use the main verb here make not makes good result in all exam and the question mark is very important and now the last one for this teachers love him very much for this just put it for this year and uh, with comma 
Teachers love him very much. Here, verb is love and its object is him and subject is teachers. Okay. So, we must uh, turn the object into subject. Here, he, him, turn into he, the subjective form of him. And the auxiliary verb is and V3 loved, loved very much by teachers and you uh, just uh, teachers uh, is, are, uh, is known. So, you put it at the object of by at the end of the sentence. Okay. Uh, in the in doing um, such exercise uh, in voice sense, uh, you you are just um, mentioned that subject will be object. Subject will be object, not the bar, object of the verb. Subject will be object of a preposition. You should keep it in mind. Okay, my dear learners. Then another exercise uh, we can do exercise number ten, and this is also from your Nabudud book. Dear learners, here is the exercise for you. As it train is a very heinous act, exclamatory sentence. Everyone hates it, interrogative sentence. It is not a human act, affirmative sentence. The acid throwers should be punished, active sentence. We must become aware of it, negative sentence. And we must follow uh, the previous instruction in this exercise also. Here the answer for first one. What a heinous act acid throwing is. Acid throwing is a very heinous act. Here you find a whenever you find a in an assertive sentence, and if you want to change it into exclamatory sentence, then you must start the sentence with what. Then the then the um, rest of the part of the sentence a heinous act. Well, it will be the very where the meaning of very represent what. Okay, what a heinous act, then the last subject and verb um, uh, will be set at the end of the sentence. AC throwing is, AC throwing is subject, is is verb, AC throwing is. And the most important part, note of exclamation, you must put it at the end of the sentence, note of exclamation, otherwise you, you get it will be like zero. B, everyone hates he it and here you see everyone is the keyword of the sentence when we find an everyone all everybody you and if you uh, want to change it into integrative sentence then you start with who who and this is present in definite sense so you use doesn't and when you write doesn't you cannot cannot uh, put uh, an uh, extra s with the main verb because do already contains yes okay and here is the question mark is very important i uh, repeat, it, repeat it frequently but most of you the students uh, um, uh, will do the same mistakes again and again in the examination it is not a human act it is not a human affirmative you must um, uh, detect not here it is not is out human and a human the opposite of our human the answer for you it is an inhuman inhuman act and here is also say that a a, a human but an inhuman here a, i is vowel sign here so you should be careful uh, in using uh, articles also here number d as it throws should be punished active and that means this is a uh, passive voice and the verb is should be punished. <coughs> we can say who will be punished. This is a subject. If you want to find out the subject, then you can ask uh, with the help of who. The punished punishment can be given um, can give only the government, none other. No other can give that. So the government should be be will be deducted because B is um, B we be we use B in the passive voice. And it is active word, so B is out from here. The government should punish. And punish is here V3, and you must use the base form of verb after should. The AC throwers. This is the object. And the last one, we must become aware of it. We cannot but become, uh, be, uh, become aware of it. And this is the clue here, the keyword must. Whenever you find a word must, have to, has to, had to, then uh, you must 
change it into negative sentence cannot but okay dear learners i think you also uh, you are understood uh, all these sentences from exercise 10 and now this is exercise number 11 none can prosper in life without industry the idol always lag behind hard working is very essential to succeed in life a hard working person can see the light of prosperity we cannot but work hard to be established in life the five sentences here i think uh, i should not uh, repeat all the rules here i mentioned again and again this is the answer here the number who can prosper in life without industry Where, whenever you find everyone everybody all is who then negative word but when you find none no one then you is only who and then affirmative word just nothing else you just use who instead of none and put a question mark at the end of the sentence number b the idol always lag behind negative here there is no auxiliary uh, oh, here is a uh, affirmative word always you change it just a negative sentence the idol never succeed c number hard uh, hard work is very essential to succeed in life exclamatory sentence hard work is here is no ah uh, so you, you start with how and the rest of the part of after the very essential to succeed in life essential what is essential hard work how essential hard work is to succeed in life and must use note of exclamation at the end of the sentence a hardworking person can see the light of prosperity passive here the verb can see and object is the light of prosperity so you turn the light of prosperity into subject the light of prosperity then can can and auxiliary verb v and the v3 of c is seen and here the preposition by the subject a hardworking person a hardworking person the light of prosperity can be seen by a hardworking person and the last one here we cannot but work hard to be established in life affirmative here cannot but we must use must instead of cannot but i think you are understood my dear learners dear learners this is the time uh, for homework and our homework number 24 you must um, practice exercise uh, number 1 to 15 and then you uh, you uh, must do exercise number 12 and 15 and in uh, in your cw copy uh, sw copy at home now homework number 24 and you must submit it to your respective teacher and all these exercises from novodot book dear learners learners i think you uh, you have enjoyed the class and thank you very much thank you very much for having class with me allah